made it so far. Good afternoon. I hope everybody is still awake. I'll keep this pretty lighthearted, so it's not about the, the depth of content, but it's a bit more about the storytelling, and we'll see how far we get here. So Catching the Fraud is an experience we had a couple of months ago, and the background story is I work for Elastic as a developer advocate. We have quite a large community, and we try to re reward the community for doing things for us, or we also try to incentivize them to do things for us. So we have something we call the contributor program, um, which looks something like this. Um, you contribute in some way or another. Basically, you get points. It runs for a year. And after a year, we have the winners per region. So we try to incentivize the right things. Um, and we have various categories, so you can organize an event, you can do a presentation, you can write a blog post, you can contribute a pull request, open a GitHub issue. For all of those, you can get points, which is easy enough, and we try to find a way where the points are reasonable, that we kind of like have that, depending on the effort you put into it, this kind of makes sense. So we have this point system, we count all the points over a year, and, <laughs> and then we have a winner or multiple winners. Um, to also keep this a bit fairer, we have a validation step. We'll come to the validation step a bit li later. So basically, you hand in some content, and then we let the community also validate that this is from you, and this is the right thing, and this actually is a blog post about Elastic, for example, and not just a random link. And you also get points for checking that. So we try to fully automate that, that the community can add the content and then also validate. And we basically just have to steer the entire thing. And this is how it's set up. Um, just to give you a quick idea of how that looks like, um, as you can see, this was written by backend developers. Um, but we'll try to change that this year and also make it a bit prettier, because we have one colleague who is a bit better with UI than us. Um, this is a staging th system that's just running locally, so I can just um, do whatever I want here. Um, we single sign on through cloud into this, which will basically read. It's a SAML uh, that will redirect me, and then I'm logged in. And then I can do add my various contributions that I have done. And hopefully, the Wi-Fi is on our side. But you can see. It's local, and these are all the fake users that have whatever points and, and then get little prizes awarded. Um, you can submit a contribution where I can say I submitted, I don't know, a blog post about the Elastic Stack in English in Foo. Um, and maybe I also had a social media post about that, so we get, give you extra points. Um, You can say, this was an important post, and you add whatever description, and then you submit it. Um, and then you have submitted that, and you have all the contributions that you have made. And then somebody else um, can validate the contribution, for example. Uh, and I, I validated all the contributions in my account, but normally you would have something where you could check the link, and then just click the Validate button, and then you would get a point for validating a contribution. So far, so good. Um, so. We try to dog food, or the French, I think, would always say, drink your own champagne. Um, so it's running on Kubernetes, Spring Boot, and Spring Data, and Elasticsearch. This is all that is driving this. And we're back. Um, and this is going quite well. Um, so we have the various contributions you can see over the year. Obviously, there's always a spike. Everybody submits everything in the last, on the last day or last week. So here you have the spikes of contributions. Um, you can see how many things were declined and approved. Like Most people only submit correct stuff, um, in which solution, um, which type of content, how many submissions, how many validations from the community, which category, etc. We also have like a Sankey chart, so we have always expected people to kind of cheat. One of the ways we expected people to cheat is that somebody would have maybe two accounts, and so somebody submits something, and then always the same, or always one specific other account validates their submission. So we have a Sankey chart where you basically see these, like who validates the contributions of who, and if there are any outliers. Um, and I've done my best to anonymize everything in the slides. That's why I cannot show you the dashboard live, because then you would have all the email addresses of our, our participants in there, which we don't want to have. I can show you a couple of things live um, that are not with personal data, um, but some will abstract away. So this was all going well. And then we made uh, a mistake. 
we, we said, we'll make this bigger and better. We'll, if you win, we'll give you a MacBook. And depending on where you live, a MacBook is very expensive. And it made people very creative in finding ways to win. And so the, we thought at first, wow, this is going so well. I mean, obviously, nobody starts submitting stuff at the beginning. So these are like the, the requests our, on our site. I can, this one I can show you live because it's, uh, it doesn't contain personal information. Um, so here, for example, um, our program always runs from February, <coughs> sorry, February 1st to January 31st. Um, we, we had about 7 million requests on the application where we thought, wow, this was very successful. Um, we, we monitor like the page loads and like how everything works. Um, we can also see like response times per country and everything. And then we looked at this graph and we're like, wow, did we really get that many submissions or page requests on the very end of that the, the period? This is kind of suspicious already. And then at first we thought, well, it's, it's going very well. And then we started looking at the location, for example. And then we saw that out of our 3 million something requests, more than 3 million came from Brazil. And then we were like, this is very odd. Um, something weird is happening. We, we don't really know why or what, but something weird is happening. Um, so we already had the fear that things were not going as well as we were expecting, and we had kind of started a little trash fire. Um, so how did that trash fire evolve over time? Does anybody have creative ideas how to cheat? Well, well, we'll see. We found a couple. I'm not sure we found everything, actually. So if you have creative ideas, we're all ears um, of what else to check. Um, but we started looking at, for example, the geographic distribution. And we were like, this is very weird. Like, I, I know that the people in Brazil are very active and want to do stuff. But it's like 3 million requests, and everybody else has like less than a million. That's weird. Also, that Germany is so high is also slightly suspicious. Um, but maybe somebody was very active, or somebody tried to cheat. So we looked at things, and then we first we looked at the latency of the backend application, and we were very happy, actually. Um, the latency of the backend application was super low. And by the way, this one I can also show you live, because it doesn't contain personal data. Um, so it's, it's our application. It's running. Um, these ones are here. They show you when we deployed. Um, so we haven't deployed in a while at the end to keep everything stable. Um, but you can see. The backend the latency of our application was very low. Um, though the throughput looked very weird again, because normally we have a throughput of like 20 requests per minute or so. And towards the end, we suddenly ended up with around 1,000 or so transactions per minute on the application, which is a very odd pattern. Like, we didn't promote it that heavily. We didn't go viral anywhere. Um, and so the there were not a lot of failures. Um, the time spent in different places of the application was also low. Like The Elasticsearch queries were fine. We couldn't really figure out what was going on. We started looking at the transactions, and then we started seeing a couple of weird patterns. And um, again, like the throughput is very high here. And then we have down here, we see um, how many requests we do. And you can see, for example, on the validate endpoint, we can see this spike. Um, and that suddenly we have a lot of transactions here. And then we started diving deeper. And now I'm basically switching over from the observability side, which we've always been using just to A, use our products, and B, figure out that our application is using the way it should be for our end users. Um, that, I said, that we said, um, again, this is the, the right time frame, or we could even shorten that to the, the last three weeks, actually. Um, let me change that. Um, so we, we only look at January from January 15th to 31st, for example. Um, and then, um, for example, we can look at the URL endpoints. Let me quickly try to put that together, uh, URL path. And in a moment or so, this will aggregate everything together. And then we can see. We have, on the validate endpoint, we suddenly had 8 million requests or so in 15 days. 
which is probably not human. Does anybody have any guesses how people started cheating? So we, since we, we have these, like you hand in something, and then up to, we wait for three validations from people, and we give, or we gave, we have changed it since then, every validation one point, and basically to, to file a pull request, you got six points, which is probably quite a lot of work. But to click on a button, approve, on the validate for one point is very cheap. So what some people figured out was that they would just write a bot that would continuously load the page and automatically click on that approve button, which is clearly against the rules because we say you need to check if this is really from that person and fulfills all the criteria that we have. But people automated that and were basically automatically just clicking on that button. And I, I would love to show you the breakdown. So um, we have the user name. And I, I would love to drag that username down here to break down, because then you will suddenly see how many requests came from one user. Um, but then you would see the email address. So I'll need to switch back to the slides, um, because I don't want to show what people have been doing here. Um, so basically, what we found out that from one email address, um, and then we basically broke it down on the validate endpoint for the Java application. Um, then we checked like in the last 90 days or seven days, it didn't really make much difference, like how many requests came from one single user. And then we figured out that this one here started and had the most requests, but then it also turned out that I think one, two, th three, five, and seven or so were friends, and they started to use the same scheme at some point. Um, so they all had a bot running that was continuously checking for validations and would automatically click on those. Um, and then the other interesting question was, is like, where do we start counting it as cheating and where do we disqualify people? And what is kind of like okay-ish? Because like here, you're still at, I don't know, over 90 days, you have 50,000 requests or so. Is 50,000 requests a reasonable amount for a person? Like, are you sitting there and click refresh 50,000 times on that page? Or where do we start kicking out people? And we, I think we put the threshold here because here this was a big jump. Like up until here, like we expected that those were all clearly cheating. And down here, it's maybe okay-ish. Um, so that was the first way we found people cheating. Um, we were quite happy that our application didn't cough or do anything. Like it was very happy to have all the load. Um, but people were clearly cheating. And there was one other small problem then that we figured out, that people actually triggered the race condition in our code, that normally we would only accept three approvals for one submission. But because of the race condition, some people managed to squeeze in four or even five, because they were just like every 500 milliseconds or so, they were doing that uh, request, and then we just gave them points. So people squeezed out more points of the system than they should have gotten. So that was the number one that we found. Then we ran a... Again, more on the, the aggregation side, we ran an aggregation on the names. Because, well, you submit with your name. And some people were smarter than others. Um, this one was the most non-smart one, because it was for one name. We found seven email addresses. And especially then we found the email address pattern that this is whatever name, and then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And then that person would just submit things and, and validate it for themselves. and it, it was a mess, but that was clearly against the rules as well, and we, we excluded that one. Um, then we also had some accounts where we were like, we're not sure if that's the same person or not, because they're using the same main name, but maybe two people just have the same name. How do you discover that? And again, we went then back to the observability data. We took the email addresses, because that person was smart enough to use very different email addresses. And we were not quite sure if that's the same person or not. But then we basically searched for those two email addresses. And then it was always the same IP address. And you could see a clear pattern that it was all on the same day. And like within a few minutes that they, from the same IP address, came in with the same or with these two accounts that they were using, and just handing in some stuff and validating some stuff with another account, and just like pushing their own points there. Um, so that one we excluded as well, because that's also not what we wanted. Um, one other thing that we had is to promote the program. Um, we give you extra points if you basically get people to join the program, like we have a referral program. 
And obviously, some people managed to, I don't know how they did that, but they managed to convince a lot of people to join in their name. Um, so we had, we, we looked at the referrals, and then we found that one person, bless you, one person had 49% of all the referrals in the system, um, which was also shady, also because that person, like every single referral they did, you need to do one submission yourself to be then getting the referral points for your ref referral. And each one of those 100 plus people they referred had exactly one submission of something. Um, those were also like the first two here were also excluded because they, they did too much shady stuff. Um, so to wrap up, or before I wrap up, any other creative ideas of cheating that you would have done? Yeah, so this was back in, in January, so ChatGPT was not the hype yet. Uh, but it is true for this cycle, um, auto-generated content will be hard to, or will be a problem. Um, which is the other thing, but that's not clearly cheating, is like sometimes you drive the wrong incentives. Because we have seen that some people write on one day 10 very short and average blog posts just to get 10 written contents and other, or 10 written content category points, um, and others write one very long blog post, but it's the same amount of points than one not so good ones. So it is a problem of driving the wrong incentives. But yes, ChatGPT and generated content will be another problem for this cycle where we're not sure yet how we will exclude that. Um, but yeah, work with the community, um, but this, the incentives are definitely problematic. So this year we are not doing MacBooks anymore. Also because it turned out shipping a MacBook to China, for example, is a nightmare. Um, and also in other regions, like shipping stuff uh, and buying it and expensing it within the company policies can be very complicated. So we, we don't want to do that. And we want to people to focus on the right things and do them for the right reasons and not just to win the stupid MacBook and then do weird stuff because that's just annoying us and costing us a lot of time. Um, and yeah, the other thing is trust your people or trust people, but be sure to check, and we were actually glad that we had all the tools, even though we hadn't anticipated that in place, that we, with the combination of observability and then slicing and dicing the data um, with um, analytics, that we could find a couple of things where people were cheating. Unfortunately, it was very hard to say like, if this was everybody who was cheating or everything, um, but it's the, the best that we could do, to be honest. Um, that's it. Before you all leave, I'll take a picture with you so I can prove to my colleagues that I've been working today. Can you all wave and say fraud? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Thank you. Um, any questions? Yes. I think we have two minutes left. Yes, please. So first off, thank you for your talk. Uh, my question would be, have you had any success in automating your fraud detection process? It sounded like you did all this manually. Yeah, so the, the thing is, we have anomaly detection, so if you know what to look for, you could, of course, add anomaly detection and say, like, there is a weird outlier. The problem is that you still, for the anomaly detection, you kind of, like, need to figure out, like, what signals are you looking for? Is it the number of requests or the number of submissions? Um, we also added a couple of thresholds since then. For example, you can only submit 10 pieces of content in one day anymore, so that people don't write 12 bad blog posts and submit all of them every day and then push in a very short amount of time through that. We don't have it fully automated yet, or I feel like it's a very exploratory way that you look at the data and look at the leaderboard. And what we also then do is like we look at, for example, the top three people in each region and look like what have they done and like what was their pattern of winning and like was it all, bless you, in the last week or was it over a longer period of time and what was the content? Because it's not just about like let making them do the content, but we also want to see what people are actively working on or what they complain about or what they're documenting and what might be helpful. Um, so there is, I think, a very qualitative aspect to it as well and not just like automating everything away. But yeah, so machine learning is probably something we want to add for the future. Um, and then we'll probably need to pay ChatGPT to have the analysis that it was this was an automated or a generated text. But this is also sort of feels like a stupid arms race where who can generate the more human code or who can de or the more human text and who can detect that it's more machine than human. Um, 
And again, these are not really the, the things we want to spend our time on or the incentives we want to set, but I'm afraid it will be something that we'll have to fight. Maybe I can give you an update next year um, of all the ChatGPT fights that we have started. Any other questions? Yes, please. Shout and I repeat. Did we look at some kind of clustering to detect fraud? Um, yeah, so we, we, did, we, we looked at that, um, both through queries, but also stuff like Sankey charts. Um, we did not find too much in that regard, to be honest. Um, maybe, maybe we're just looking at the wrong dimensions, I don't know, uh, but like finding it in, in other ways was, was more successful. But yeah, we, we tried to find some clusters, like who was, interacting with who and like, is there a specific domain but everything is Gmail nowadays or um, do we have any hotspots in terms of names? So it was a bit of a manual thing, to be honest. Uh, maybe we can get smarter for that, but it's also not a huge data set. It's a couple of, it's like 10,000 entries or so um, of submissions. Um, so it's, I'm not sure how, how well the clustering will work on, on small enough data sets, um, but the goal is, of course, to grow it for next year, and then maybe we can do more cool stuff. I think we're pretty much out of time. Thanks a lot for joining. If you have more questions, just find me in the next half hour or so. Thanks a lot for joining.